All right, so I've uh, uninstalled everything from my computer and we are gonna start from scratch. So let's go take a look at our notepad and see what is uh, up first. So first we're gonna download and install Postgres and PostGIS. Uh, so this is super easy. So let's just go to Google and let's search for Postgres. Um, and we're gonna click on this uh, downloads button here. And we're gonna go to Windows, assuming you're on Windows and if you click this download the installer I always think this is kind of confusing like I was expecting it to be here somewhere but the link is actually here so download the installer and now we want the latest version which looks like 14.3 and we want it for Windows so just click download right here uh, and I'm gonna do my best to put all of these links in um, somewhere somewhere in the uh, in the comments in the YouTube video that, that you can uh, reference these later um, so just download this this uh, shouldn't take too long to download. Uh, it's already finished downloading here, so um, actually, yeah, now it's finished downloading. So I'm just going to show this in the folder, and you can see this is from when I downloaded it earlier. So we can use either one of these. I'm just going to use this one. Just double click on that, and we should get a uh, wizard pop up to help us install this. So let me minimize this, minimize this. And let's just focus on the installer for now. So just click next. Uh, it's just asking you where you want to install it. This is the default location, which is fine. So just click next. Now it's asking, do you want to install any of these extra things? So, well, it's, it's asking you everything that you want to install. So obviously we want Postgres. We want PG Admin. PG Admin's uh, a, like a GUI interface for Postgres. If you didn't have this, you'd have to interact with it through the command line, which nobody wants to do that in 2022. Um, Stack Builder, this is going to allow us to install PostGIS, for example. So I'll show you how that works in a sec. And we want, might as well just install command line tools too. So just click next. Uh, this is saying where the actual data is gonna be stored. That's fine. Now this is asking for a password for the Postgres user, which is the default super user. So just make something up and just make sure you remember it and click next. And that's the default port for Postgres. We're just gonna leave that the same. i just click next and next and next and just let this run. And this shouldn't, um, I don't think this should take too long Alright, so that took about 10 minutes to get here. Uh, it'll depend on how your the specs of your computer, how fast it actually installs, but yeah, it doesn't take that long. Uh, now it's saying, do you want Stack Builder to run at the exit? Uh, and we're going to leave the check yes, because we want to run Stack Builder so we can install PostGIS. Alright, so now this is Stack Builder, um, and it's just asking what um, Postgres database do you want to run Stack Builder on? And we only have this one here, so just select that. All right, and then we need to check the spatial extensions and then PostGIS uh, 3.2 bundle. So just check that on and then click next and next. And next again. And just agree and we don't need to create a spatial database. Uh, so just click next here. This shouldn't take too long. Okay, now it's gonna ask about a bunch of different environment variables that uh, it's asking if you wanna register them. And we're just gonna say yes for all these. And it's just adding these certain particular environment variables. Uh, okay, so we're done. And now we're finished. So at this point, we should, if we take a look at the Windows services, I just wanna show you like what is actually, what actually got installed and what's running. So if we go to Windows Services, we should see Postgres in here somewhere. So right here, this Postgres, so that got installed uh, just now. So if if we were to actually stop this, then your Postgres database wouldn't work, but we don't wanna do that. We're just gonna leave this on. Uh, it's automatic, so if you sh shut down the computer, it's gonna restart the service uh, upon 
uh, the restart of the computer. But just wanted to show you that, that that's actually what is what's, what's happening there. Um, okay, so let's check our list. So we've downloaded and installed PostGIS. So that's already done. So that was pretty easy. So now we're going to create a new OSM database. So to do that, we need to open up uh, our database, right? We need to get to the database. And to do that, we can just search for PG admin. It should have got installed when you uh, installed PostGIS. You can also search for it uh, down here. It should be right in this. Um, no, actually, where is it? Post put the Postgres folder here. Yep, PG admin. Give this a couple seconds to open up. Okay, so uh, right away it's asking for a master password. So it's asking you to make a password just for PG Admin. So this has nothing to do with the databases. It's just a password that will get you into PG Admin. So it's asking us to create one. So I'm just going to create a password. Uh, okay, so now we have servers here, and you'll notice. Oh, it must be. I think it's it, something must be remembering that the old. Um, server here. So I'm actually going to remove this server because you guys probably won't see this on your screen. Okay, so now we have just a blank PG admin, no server, no Postgres connected, or no, yeah, no Postgres. So we're going to right click and create a server group. Actually, nah, I clicked the wrong thing. Create a server group. Call it Postgres. Actually, I think I clicked on the wrong thing. Let me re remove that. There we go. Yeah, you just need to right click and register server. It threw me off the, the interface here for a second, but let's just call this uh, test. And then your connection is going to be localhost which means this computer. So localhost, um, that's where our database is installed on this computer. If it was installed on another computer, for example, you'd give it the IP address or um, the domain name uh, or et cetera. Um, so yeah, let's just leave it like that. Username is Postgres and let's save that. Okay, no password. So yep, we gotta give it the password. So this is the password that you created during the installation of Postgres. So just click save. And now we call it test. Let's actually rename that. I don't like that name. Uh, so if you go to properties, I'm just going to call this Postgres. Postgres 14. Does that font look weird? It doesn't matter. <laughs> just call it whatever you want. Postgres 14. Um, databases and you see there's automatically this Postgres database created. We don't want to touch this. We don't want to put anything in there. Uh, we're actually going to create a new brand new database. So to do that you just right click and say create database. And we're going to call this OSM for OpenStreetMap. But again you can call this whatever you want um, and create that. Okay. I think this is because there must be some lingering artifact from the last time I created this database. So I'm going to actually totally delete it and then recreate it. You guys probably won't have to deal with this, uh, assuming you'd never had a, an OSM database, uh, that, that exact name. So I'm just going to try this again. If this doesn't work, I'm just going to give it a new name like OSM two, but I think this will work. Yep. There we go. So, there was some lingering artifact from the old install that was holding on to the OSM name. So uh, anyway, we got that working. So now let's take a look at our instructions again. So we created the new OSM database. So those two steps are done. Now we just need to enable PostGIS extension. So oops, whoops. to do that, if you go, let me minimize this. If you go to just right click on your database and say query tool, and all you need to do is type this out. So create extension PostGIS. 
Now this won't work if you didn't run the stack builder and install PostGIS. It'll just say it doesn't know what PostGIS is. But since we uh, explicitly, explicitly said during the stack builder to install that, uh, it knows what that is. And if you refresh the extensions here, actually, let me show you what it looks like right now. There's nothing in here. All right, there's these two things. Uh, it looks like it automatically refreshed. But yeah, you wouldn't see this PostGIS prior to running that command. So that's cool. So let's do the next one. Enable hstore. So that's a, a similar process. Create extension hstore. Okay. All right. Let's test this and refresh it. There we go. hstore is in there. 